Sure. Great. I, we've got a, two more segments to go, but I'd like to go another uh, another hour if we can. That's only 40 minutes. Just, I, I really want to build this up appropriately. And and all the listeners out there, I, the email I've gotten has been uh, extraordinary about your work. So even if the uh, the Black Ops boys don't care, these listeners do. I'm sure the Black Ops guys are going about it their own way. Well, they're and, listening. And they don't miss anything. They 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 know. Yeah, and I'm, we've also run across uh, various different other countries. Uh, just today, I had to repel a large hack attack that was being piggybacked off of an old Lotus Notes server that IBM runs. Um, and they're some most of them are coming from Finland and. and what kind of an attack? Uh, they were attempting to come in via particular TCP uh, ports. They, but the issue is that they, I don't think they understand how my setup is here. I have a couple of honeypots and, um, you, and you're my not, servers. Are you're not about so. to get hacked. Uh, it doesn't work. It, it's very difficult, yeah. And even if you get into my personal machine, you don't get much. So. What, were they, what do you think they were trying to get, your software? Uh, I don't just... know. Maybe the database, maybe the lexicon. Uh, those, those parts of it are very unique. We have run across the Chinese um, military. Right, of, you uh, mentioned that. Yeah, we've captured some of their source code, and they're doing the same thing, very sophisticated. And, again, they're doing it at the same level that we are, where we don't really care who says what to whom. We care what is being said and how it was different from what was being said about the same subject a week ago or two weeks ago or a year ago. And the Chinese are also looking at things that way in a very archetypical level. I think they were attempting to, or have already built, uh, mood-sensing software, uh, kind of like ours. And that, that's one way to think of ours is that it senses large mo- movements in the um, in the mood of the populace. As expressed and, via the, the language. Correct. And we get uh-huh. some really good inter- interesting information that can be interpreted. For instance, we got details about the uh, D.C. sniper that proved to be very accurate when everybody in the global media stream was running around screaming, you know, single white nut job in a white van. We, uh, George, actually, I think, didn't you have the patch on your site? Yeah, we actually, uh, one, one of the readers of Urban Survival, uh, uh, after, after I put up Cliff's descriptor set, said, gee, that, that sure sounds like uh, an Army Ranger out of Fort Lewis kind of thing. And also wow. had the global <laughs> mass, the Globemaster uh, plane. Yeah, there, there, was yeah. A, there was a specific reference uh, in the linguistics that Cliff had pulled out to globe circling above, and, and and as it turns out, the older of the two guys involved had military experience, and as I recall, it was jumping out of Globemasters. Now, let, let me ask you a question. When you come across a new word or phrase on the Internet, something different, how many instances of it, Cliff, will you come up with before you, you call it a trend? That's How many do you sep- need? That's two separate questions, really. You have to understand the way language works, no matter what language it is. Uh-huh. New language evolves and has a tendency to spread through a mechanism that's known as a ladder um, mathematics. And it's the same kind of uh, patterns that you see spreading disease in orchards or frost damage on orchards, that kind of thing. Okay. So we'll pick the pattern up maybe as early as the first three to 4,000 instances of the word being used. That's now, that's on a global basis, folks. I correct. want you to understand. And how many, how many, how many fora and venues would you scan? Oh, uh, half a million or more. We we get ninety uh, plus million reads. Each read can be a uh, maximum size is two thousand forty eight words. And the, but that's kind of a little bit misleading because it actually has a lot more intelligence to it. So it has already, by the time it's gotten to that reading point, dumped all kinds of stuff around those words. Okay, so you, you come up with a word, uh, a word pattern or a phrase. Do you then take that word pattern or phrase and key your software to look for that specifically, or do you continue doing a, a broad-based rake of the whole system? The latter. We continue on our normal processing and just sort of file that away in one of these little bin uh, that we, we call bit buckets. Uh-huh. And uh, sort of stash it over there and pay attention to it when it shows up repeatedly and doesn't die off. You have to understand that there's a lot of attempts to uh, deliberately create slang and a lot of slang that's regional or whatever, and thus we might 
see 30, 40, 50,000 instances of it, and it dies off. It never catches fire. Deliberately, well, deliberately, just as a social aberration, just as a, a social quirk, or is, or is this being deliberately done to... Th- a a click group. Okay, I got you. All right. So I as understand. George is saying... Slang. I, I, okay. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's just not worth pursuing in any case because you can see, for instance, that it's a setup for... Uh, but particularly we're seeing it in the video game uh, industry now where they'll try and create certain memes three to four months before the video game is out and try and build up some pre-setup response in an emotional fashion. Now, how subtle are they at doing this? They're not very. It's the same kind of issue as with the black ops people or whoever in their digital presence. Uh-huh. Really, the only thing they can do is attempt to manipulate the grosser emotions they don't understand the nature of the linguistics, and in fact, what they're revealing about their attempts, just by the language they're using, is very enlightening. Because bear in mind, these people, although they're smart, they're not immune from leaking out their own motivations within the domain set of the language. Ah. And, and so what's really curious here, Jeff, is when Cliff is going out looking at a mainstream power that be kind of a website, to get the seeding language, which which is kind of a think of it as a starting point when you want to find out what the powers that be are thinking. Okay, seeding language. Go read language. a power that right. be website. Got it. Okay, and then what gets really interesting? What, what the last couple of three months it's been bespoke fear is starting to leak. Yeah, yeah. The powers that be are very definitely afraid, and it's uh, showing in a number of levels, uh, perhaps down. Eight, ten, maybe twelve different uh, levels down from the word fear. So we bust up fear, and we have put the fear at the top of the list. And then what we do is we decide what adjectives help describe fear: uh, trembling, all the way up through uh, involuntary bodily functions. And so if we were to find many references that, at an archetypical level, went to involuntary or involuntary bodily functions. We know that the level of fear is very high because those adjectives are in the secondary. Okay, when we come back, I want to spend a little bit of time and ask you to define that high level that is evidencing fear. Who is it? Is this Washington, D.C.? Is this Washington, D.C., Tel Aviv, and the London banking interests? Or is this something else? Uh, this is This is very interesting, very important. Be right back in just a couple minutes. Let me invite you to drop by rents.com. Uh, we we do present real journalism for you. And remember, I don't approve of all the stories up there. I don't agree with them. That's not my job. My job is to try to give you material to help you understand better what's going on around you. Be right back. Okay, and we're back with George and Cliff. Okay, gentlemen, uh, if you you want to comment on anything where we are right now in the conversation? Yeah, I'd like to say before we get too much further along that the way that we work things here, George, your site, uh, urbansurvival.com, will always have available on his uh, free daily update anything that we think that we've discovered that is in the general public's interest, like uh, watch out for falling objects. We think there's going to be a big earthquake or something along those lines. So it, it's not like we're hiding any information or trying to make people pay for stuff that we think affects the general welfare. We're approaching this with as rigidly a moral and, and karmic view of what we're doing as we can because to a certain extent we've already seen the limitations of the other world and what it's offered in terms of paper debt and money is going to go away in a very quick time frame. And it's necessary that all regular humans band together and start seeking cooperative methods by which we can all move forward into a very trepidatious future. And so we'll always offer that information free on George Ger's urbansurvival.com site on his daily update. Okay, I'm going to have know to, something. Right. That's where it'll be. I'm uh, fixing the link now to his name on my homepage, so you'll be able to click on George's name and go right to his site, urbansurvival.com. And Cliff's name will go to halfpasthuman.com. Okay, I was saying something right before the break, and I'm doing four things at once, and I've forgotten where I was. Do you, you remember? Were, you were discussing the powers that be in the. Fear That's right, the fear, the fear issue. Now we we want to pursue that a little bit more. At what level is this fear? Who are they? Are you talking about the idiot in the White House and his neocon handlers? Who are we talking about? 
We're actually talking about what uh, Buckminster Fuller described in uh, Critical Path as the invisible hand by which we're all manipulated. Uh, it's the small, self-styled elite that is much beyond the White House. The White House is uh, middle-level uh, minions for these people. Correct. I so, understand. That, that's, an un- that's a given. I'm just wondering if the, if the fear is beginning there or just if they are be. actually reflecting it coming. In other words, what I think you're saying, and forgive me for prattling here a little bit, is that the, the ultimate controllers are not so cocksure about what their plans are going to yield. You're quite correct, and they're running into a set of circumstances that is both uh, spiraling out of their control and which they had not anticipated certain ramifications. One of them is you'll note that there's been recent efforts to, if you will, scrub history as though they're trying to race the actual release of information and the spread of it across the Internet and the indie media Uh about the true nature of things. Uh-huh. There, you'll see more and more memes as we go forward over the next year or two about the idea of the Illuminati or whoever, quote, coming out of the woodwork here. And the idea is that they'll expose themselves and say, see, we're not such bad guys after all, and you really do want a new world order. It'll be a benevolent, benign, much better place. Right, we need to right. stop squabbling. We've got to homogenize. We've got to harmonize. Right. It'll and be let better us for in charge. <laughs> and let and that's right. Remember, this would be a, a better if it was a dictator as long as I'm in charge. Right. Um, it goes much higher than that, though. We're seeing it with the uh, recent uh, press about the the Knights Templar and attempting to get the reconciliation of the Vatican. That's the beginning of the opening strategy. What's interesting, though, is that the powers that be are not doing this because they want to. Uh, they may have had plans to do it 20 or 30 years from now, uh-huh. but they're uh-huh. doing it because they're forced to by a How interesting. They are afraid. They know they don't have the Trump cards they used to have. This Iran thing could spiral hideously out of control. That, I think, to them is a relatively minor blip. They're afraid of much deeper archetypes. They're afraid of um, revealing of information that is at a core level that would change how all humans think about humanity and thus their individual and collective position in it. So, for instance, imagine what would happen if... Richard Hoagland's view of the Mars, Earth, and Moon as, as co-equal origination points or, or habitation points for humans became widely known and proven. If you thought you had a history as a human that went back 100 million years and humans used to live on Mars and humans used to live on the Moon, and now we're finding evidence that that was the case here, then we can put to rest a whole lot of relatively recent Oh, every, kind of sure. everything turns over. By the way, that's yeah. uh, that, that's all true uh, to one degree or another, as you, and, as you and, guys and, and know. And in fact, you know, we're, we're starting to see more and more discussion on the Internet of things like uh, the asteroid belt being a blown-up planet. Yeah, well, like ha- that. have you seen John Leonard Walson's, the, the two series I've been doing for months now? Yeah. His Space yeah. Machines. Yeah. And his, yeah. did you see yeah. his most recent trip, John Visits the Moon? Did you see at the minute and 50 point what's yeah. on the moon? That perfect red, absolutely geometrically perfect spire sticking up out of the moon's surface? No question oh, about it, none. Yeah. And you see that's reflected in some of the sites we go to to stay current with the language from the powers that be. They don't really like a lot of this information coming out. Oh, no. John gets hassled all the time. Uh, We're talking about uh, Chinook helicopters, black helicopters. Uh, Yeah, he's he's found something that, that we're not supposed to be seeing, and he did it by creating something with a telescope that was actually an invention of his, an innovation that allows him to see in broad daylight at the very limits of optical diffraction. I mean, it's, it's quite an achievement. It's an amazing discovery. And, of course, it has to be buried because of what he's looking at. And there's discoveries like this all over the place that are popping right. up, again, much to the consternation of the powers that be because they like to think of themselves as in charge and managing it all. It's, Very good. Okay. All right. Now, let's uh, take a, a little turn and step into uh, to George's backyard and talk about the collapsing economy. Uh, things will never be the same again. That's that's for sure.